One in three, one in three, one in three. Those are numbers that continue to be highlighted when people talk about the potential of these Baltimore Ravens. Are they really a Super Bowl team? And there's some people that still do not believe in the Baltimore Ravens as a Super Bowl team, and they go right to that number because they say, hey, Lamar Jackson and those Baltimore Ravens in the playoffs, they are one in three, and that is no good. And those are facts that the Baltimore Ravens are one in three, but... Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens, they haven't had an opportunity to change that number yet over the past couple of years. Because we remember in the Bills playoff game back in 2020, he got knocked out with a concussion. In the regular season around this time, he got knocked out uh, with a high ankle sprain two years ago. And then last year in the regular season around this time, he got the PCL injury taking a sack in the Broncos game. Now, while Lamar Jackson, he was knocked out in those games with injury. It wasn't anything crazy that he was doing to get those injuries. It just happened to be freak accidents because in the Bills playoff game, uh, Patrick McCarry, he threw it too high. Lamar Jackson went to go get it. Then he threw it away and then he took a hit and he landed right on his head on the turf. And then in the Browns game two years ago, uh, it was a passing play. Uh, Jock rushed him. Lamar threw it, completed the pass too, by the way. And Jock sort of twisted his ankle a bit. I don't think it was malicious, uh, but... Lamar's out for the season after that. And then in the game last year against the Broncos, he was in a pocket and just got sacked, fell the wrong way, PCL injury, boom, he's done for the year. So despite a lot of narratives that people put out there, oh, Lamar Jackson, he, he got hurt because he's running too much. No, that wasn't the case. But he did get hurt. And the Baltimore Ravens and Lamar Jackson, they realize that and they recognize it. And they've taken some steps, which is great for the Baltimore Ravens, but they've taken some extra steps for Lamar Jackson's self-preservation. And we're going to get into exactly what they've been doing. But before we get into that, I appreciate y'all subscribing to the channel. We are at 70,100 subscribers. <laughs> I appreciate y'all a lot. Let's keep it moving, though. Keep on subscribing to the channel. Now, something else that helps out the channel a lot more than you realize is when you leave a like on the video. When you click that thumbs up button, that helps out so much. Seriously, y'all. Uh, serious. So make sure you leave a like on the video. Click that thumbs up button and know that I, I love y'all and I appreciate y'all so much now one of the things with Lamar Jackson that we've noticed this year and, and we've talked about this a countless number of times when he takes off he's not running the same way that he ran before he's not trying to charge through tacklers or anything he's not really fighting for extra yards that much he's really not even taking a, as much contact as he would before so L Lamar Jackson ha has certainly been aware of his own self-preservation been really trying to take extra care of his body and again despite th that the fact that he his running didn't even get him hurt last time it wasn't his running that got him hurt it just stuff from the pocket ended up getting him hurt uh but with Lamar Jackson he's noticed it and he said it in the interview last week with Devin McCourty he said no I, I still got it don't get it twisted I still got it but I've been holding back and with him holding back he's thinking about the long haul he's thinking about the long run uh, of the season and that he really wants to do every single thing in his power to be with his guys at this point in the season because again the past two years he hasn't been there he hasn't been there so we we haven't gotten to see the true potential of the Baltimore Ravens and that is one of the most frustrating things to think about because again one in three that gets highlighted all the time but we, we just don't know what it could have been because we haven't had our quarterback at the end of the season the past two years. But now Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens, too, they're doing everything in their power to make sure that he is here. Now, something else that the Baltimore Ravens have been doing. And, and, and y'all, please let me know if I'm wrong about this one. But this is just to my naked eye. I haven't looked up any numbers or anything like that. But to me, it seems as if the Baltimore Ravens are doing a lot less design runs with Lamar Jackson than they did before. Now, he'll still get his, and, and I do believe he is still the leading rusher at quarterback in the NFL, but the design runs have been a lot less. Now, sometimes it can be a little annoying when those design runs come through. They, the, the, the timing of them can be bad sometimes, but I feel like we've been seeing a lot less of them. Um, and that's one big part of the scheme that I appreciate. Now, something else that I've appreciated even more that where there's been such a change in the Baltimore Ravens scheme, the way that they run their offense, the checkdowns, the checkdowns. Because we remember with Lamar Jackson before, 
Like before this year, when it came to check downs, oh no, that that was not Lamar Jackson's thing. Lamar Jackson, it was deep ball or nothing. He would wait, wait, wait for something to develop. And again, that could have been due to the scheme or whatnot. But now the Baltimore Ravens, they're like, all right, Greg Roman, we're gonna go in a different direction. All right, cool. Thanks, Greg Roman, for everything. He was not a bad offensive coordinator, just had a lot of bad moments sometimes. But they was like, all right, Todd Munkin, come through. And one thing that I really appreciated about this offense is the involvement of the checkdowns. When you have those checkdowns, that gets the ball out of your quarterback's hands a lot quicker. And that gives it to somebody else. So your quarterback, it's a lot less Superman stuff that Lamar Jackson has to do. Now, sometimes you still got to put on that cape. Now, I mean, in the, in the last game, though, the defense, they had on that cape the whole game. But anyway, uh, Lamar Jackson has had to do a lot less uh, this year when it comes to the Superman stuff because – with the check down game alone, that puts it on a Gus Edwards, that puts it on a Justice Hill, that puts it on a Keaton Mitchell. So that's been really, really nice to see the offense involving the backs in the passing game because that's, that's just something that makes it a lot easier. Now, the way that the Baltimore Ravens attacked wide receiver this offseason, that helps out Lamar Jackson too. That helps out his self-preservation because when you have more options – more options on the field at pass catcher. More weapons on the field for your quarterback. That allows your quarterback to have to be less of a weapon himself. And again, self-preservation. It goes a long way. Taking care of your quarterback in more ways than one, it makes such a big difference. And the way that the Ravens did it this offseason at wide receiver and just pass catcher in general, because you already had Mark Andrews. Uh, you already had uh, Isaiah Likely. You had Rashad Bateman. You had Charlie Kohler. So you had a lot of guys there already. You had a Devin DuVernay, Tylen Wallace. But the Ravens were like, no, you know what? Let's get Odell Beckham Jr. And, yeah, he hadn't played for a year and whatnot, and it's been taking him a little while to get going. But now he, he seems to have really sort of hit a stride, which is a great thing. But they signed Odell Beckham Jr. And they could have been like, you know what, we're done. They – they also signed Nelson Aguilar, and they actually signed Nelson Aguilar before they signed Odell Beckham Jr. So they could have been like, oh, no, we're done at Nelson Aguilar, but they was like, no, we're not done. Then they signed Odell Beckham Jr., and they were like, no, we're not done. And then on top of everything else, they drafted Zay Flowers on the same day that they came to a contract agreement with their quarterback, Lamar Jackson, and they had already signed two receivers, and you still had a Rashad Bateman, you still had a Tylen Wallace, you still had a Devin Duke. They still drafted Zay Flowers. From Broward County too, by the way. So, again, helping make Lamar Jackson's job easier, but also doing things to help preserve the health of Lamar Jackson. And those things make such a big difference. And that's why the Baltimore Ravens have really set themselves up nice for their quarterback to be here at the end of the year for their quarterback to be here come playoff time and hopefully their quarterback to be here and play all the way through February so we can stop hearing about this whole one and three one and three one and three because I know I, I'm tired of hearing about it. I know y'all are definitely tired of hearing about it too but now this year the way that the Baltimore Ravens have been doing things and Lamar Jackson it's time to change that narrative